Good morning and welcome to the Central Coast Amateur Radio Club Field Day series of lectures. It um, gives me great pleasure to introduce Ray Farmer from the Australian uh, HF Touring Club and uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I know I will. Thanks Phil, thank you very much. Well good morning and thank you for showing up. Now while this is not strictly an amateur function, as most of you would be amateurs, you'd probably have an interest in radio of some sort. And that's one of the main features that this uh, club that we're involved in um, has as an attraction to its members. So the name of the club, the Australian HF Touring Club. And the reason it's named that is that we are a touring group. So anybody that travels, does anybody here do remote traveling and travel through the outback or rural areas? One, two. Anybody intending to travel? Good, good, okay. Well, you'll see shortly why um, it's important to have some sort of uh, communications access, some form of emergency access, and some form of social access. So the club is a touring club, but our common theme is a HF radio. Now, have you all been operating HF radios previously? So you're familiar with them. The obvious thing with HF radio, what is it? It's noisy. And a partner usually sitting on the passenger side of the car, turn it down, turn it down. Well, you'll see a demonstration we'll have you shortly that uh, the new generation radios overcome a lot of this problem. So, I need to get around to push a few buttons here. That's who I am. Now they say in all the, all the uh, professional organisations, you shouldn't start with your name and that because everybody knows who you are, but I'm going to defy that and do it anyway. My name is Ray Farmer, but I am an amateur. I have been since 1976. I hold two call signs, VK4ZH and VK5ARF. ARF was my father's call sign. He died, I picked it up. I'm also the president of Australian HF Touring Club. We commonly call ourselves Aussie HF, or AHFTC for short. And below it is our licence number and my particular identification number 4525. Yeah. Okay, so the Land Mobile Service is an organisation that is authorised by um, a Radio Licensing Act and obviously um, governed and regulated by ACMA. Most of you would be aware of ACMA um, being amateurs and being involved with amateurs. And this is the only screen I'm going to show you with a lot of words on it. So don't expect to be have death by PowerPoint. <laughs> so it is a communication service, as you can read, that is a mobile service or can have a land service as well. Um, and it basically allows us to communicate between mobiles to mobile, mobile to base station. There's also some aircraft, which we don't use very much, and some marine, which we do use a little bit of. So why do we use it? What is the purpose of us having it? Okay, I'm gonna give you a scenario and I'm going to ask you to tell me what you would do. Thank you. Do you know where Fitzroy Crossing is? Anybody know where it is? Where is it? And what's significant about where it is? It's pretty remote, isn't it? It's on the highway, but it's still pretty remote. So Fitzroy Crossing. So we're 180 kilometres from Fitzroy Crossing in the bush. This is a real life situation because it happened to myself and my wife. Broken suspension on the camper trailer. Can't move, can't go anywhere. No phone coverage, nothing. No mobile, no fixed phone, no, no um, normal phone service and believe it or not, no satellite communications. I'll cover that in a second. Down the road, the military, were, the army was down doing some work for a local Aboriginal community. 
and uh, they were 40 kilometres away and uh, we decided to go and ask them to get some help. Um, they actually refused because they said if we helped you and then you drove off and something else happened, you, would, you could sue us. Okay, it didn't really matter because there wasn't much they could do anyway. And how do you get help? How would you think to get help? Now, just think of your own scenario. If you're going to go driving soon, how would you get help? How would you go if you're going to go driving? Sat phone? Right. And, and, and that's the point. In that situation, that's what gave us the help. Next one, please. There's where we were. I did ask the gentleman where, where Fitzroy Crossing was. Well, we're there, in the middle of nowhere. There was absolutely nothing around. And we're stuck. So the solution. Well, as I said, no mobile phone coverage. You don't expect that out there. The satellite phone. Now, we carry a sat phone in the car. We were unable to get lock on. The military finally came down with their sat phone, their big commercial sat phone, and guess what? They couldn't get lock on either. So now we're thinking, well, what are we going to do? Amateur radio. Well, as a ham radio operator, I have amateur frequencies in my radio, land mobile service radio. It's quite legal to do so, but the question that you have to ask is what frequency would I call on and who would I call? Some of you may be aware of uh, the Traveller's Net. Anybody ever use the Traveller's Net? There's only one problem with that. It's only once a day on one frequency. And if the, ba the conditions are no good or if it's outside the time slot, you don't have access to that. So obviously, while amateur radio is a great hobby for us, as far as a safety element goes, it has its limitations. The military, as I said, they were down the road, couldn't do much for us. They couldn't even get comms either. Passerby. We were completely remote. In fact, we'd been four-wheel driving through the bush to a billabong we came across. Dawn and I had stopped and wanted to do a bit of fishing. There was nobody for miles. The answer. We made a phone call using the HF land mobile service, using the radio, the HF radio in my car. And in fact, we placed a phone call to our daughter in Brisbane, who then contacted the manufacturer of the trailer, who then put the suspension on the bus, who then shipped it to us. And we had to drive in. The car was fine. It was the camper trailer that was the problem. So we got it. The answer was the HF radio. So, we're particularly talking about the land mobile service. So as amateurs, we've all got our radio gear and as we know, it doesn't have to be type approved. The land mobile service requires type approved radios. So you can go into the shops and buy a piece of equipment. Now this, for example, is a current generation Barrett 4050 software defined radio. Does anybody have any software defined gear at home? How good is it? It's amazing, isn't it? I currently run analog, but I've just been, I've got hold of that, that particular piece of kit and it's spectacular what it can do. But most of our members don't have this sophisticated gear. There are two, two companies around, which you'll see in a minute. You can go and buy that radio. Don't have to produce a license, you don't have to do anything, but you can't use it until you meet some of the requirements ACMA have laid down. So that's a Barrett 4050. This is the Barrett that I run in my car. It's an analog radio. It has all the features that you can use, and I've been using it for years. I make phone calls with it, GPS positions, all that I'll go through shortly. Great piece of kit, but it is still analog. And then we have on the back of our vehicles or the front, depending on how sensitive you are to the local police records, the antennas on the back, these are auto-tune antennas. 
So all you do is on your radio, push the button, and it tunes up for you, does everything. The important thing about a land mobile service radio is that if you're, if, you, if you're the driver, your partner should also know how to use it. So simplicity is the key. Having an auto-tune antenna makes that simple. You don't have to worry about the tuning. Push the button, it does it all for you. Um, so that's, that's the Barrett system. Codan have a really, really schmick piece of gear called the Envoy. Again, a software-defined radio. Really, really, really nice to use. And all the controls are in the handpiece. Um, again, um, a very, very versatile piece of equipment. And Codan also have their antenna tuning units. And for those that are worried about having a huge structure on the back or the front of the car, they also provide smaller uh, tuning units. They also supply tuning units you can fit inside your car. And these are all compatible with pretty well all, the whole range of Codan gear. So if you've got a Codan radio and you get a Codan piece of gear, a Codan antenna tuner, it'll run for most of their range. They have a, quite a range of, of uh, models from a very, very early model, 9323, right up to the Envoy, and Barrett do the same. Now, as a club, we obviously don't endorse any particular brand, but what we do do is provide advice to people, and some of the advice we say is, how, how familiar are you using with radios? If you're very good, like most of the amateurs are pretty good, the software-defined radios are very, very versatile. They can use them, they can do heaps with them. If you're not that versatile or your partner's not that versatile, go with the analogue, they're a very straightforward radio. So what else do you need for the land mobile service to be of value to you? You need a highway, you need to be out there, you need to be driving. Seriously, no point around town, you're dead right. There's no point at all around town. For as far off the noise floor around most towns is horrendous, isn't it? So consequently, you've got to be on the highway and you've got to have yourself rigged up. And that's just an example. That's my car on the top left-hand side. One of our members, my antenna's mounted on the front. And um, there's also a fair bit of discussion with the authorities over it, but the law in Queensland says, as long as that antenna doesn't subtend an angle greater than two degrees, we're okay. Uh, the other friend of ours, a member there, has got his mounted in the middle. Um, and also, you notice the bottom one is our field officer, and his is on the front, but he's got that little box. So it's quite small. All that sticks up is just the stainless steel whip. So that's a typical installation of the LAM mobile service. So what are the requirements? And um, Phil asked me a good question today and talked about licensing. Well, first of all, the first requirement is no technical knowledge. Unlike us as amateurs, we have to pass an exam, we have to prove our competency in certain areas. With the LAM mobile service, you don't. You simply go and buy the radio and then the process of licensing or obtaining authority is the next step. So you can, as an individual, go to ACMA and apply for licenses. And I can tell you, every frequency is $448 plus the setup costs, plus, 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 plus. It's very expensive. And then you've got to have somebody to talk to. So somebody else has got to have your frequency, be licensed on your frequency as well. It is horrendously expensive if you try and do it by yourself. So therefore, there are clubs and organisations around in Australia, very well known, some of them been around since 1997, 95, something like that. And then there's ours, which has been going since November 2016. So you can get individual frequencies, but you'll need, does anybody know what an AP is? Okay. If, if, you ran, if you're running a club and you had to hire, get frequencies, you'd know exactly what it is. Authorised person. Uh, ACMA now tried to devolve most of their work out to uh, subcontractors, if you like, so that takes the load off them. As you know, they're limiting the amount of staffing that they've got, so they put it out to an AP, authorised person. And um, the beauty of using an AP is that they get things done a lot quicker than if you'd gone through ACMA Direct. You can still go through ACMA Direct, but if you do it through an AP, it's a lot quicker. But it's also very expensive. So the AP charges the ACMA fee plus their own fee, which is fair enough, they're a business. 
You need a type approved and transceiver. Unlike an amateur piece of gear that you can build your own gear, all that sort of stuff, this has to be type approved. It has to be approved by the Australian regulators. And you now need the radio programmed with the frequencies. So it's very good. You've got a radio that comes in. It's a green field. There's nothing on it. You need to have radio frequencies programmed. So you either go and program it with the frequencies you've paid money for, paid a lot of money for, or the other option is by joining an established organisation that holds the licence and issues the member or the subscriber with an authority to transmit. And that's where we come in. So Australian HF Touring Club, Aussie HF as we call ourselves, we own the licence, we pay all that money and we pay it out of our membership fees. We pay the current structure for this year is going to cost us almost $20,000 for, for, for just for licensing and getting control of the, of the system. So you can do that by joining the club and, and the club then, you pay the club fee, whether you join one or the other, and they'll issue you the authority to transmit on their frequencies. Not only that, you've now got a whole pool of people you can talk to. And you'll have a whole range of facilities available to you depending on where you go. Just one point on that previous slide was though, but you still need to have authorisation. We'll go back. Now. Okay, so now we're introducing, now comes the commercial. This is me. This is what we're about. The Australian HF Touring Club, or well, we call ourselves Aussie HF, because if you have a look at our website, you'll see we are very Aussie, Aussie lingo. You didn't do it? Oh, okay. You can, you can go back if you hit the, move it over to the back button. Um, we're very Aussie focused. So on our website, all our terminology is based around Aussie language. So for example, when we get together and talk to each other as a group, we have a thing called a mate's muster. And when we get a place that we like to share with other people, Swaggy's Outposts. And our actual membership area is called the Home Paddock. Everything that we do, because we want people to enjoy this country, want to keep the concept of the Aussie traveller alive and enjoy what we've got to offer out there. And be advised that if you like travelling on dirt roads, get in and do them now, because the plans are to some of the major dirt roads to be bitumised. It won't, doesn't, doesn't stop the fact that you won't have comms because they won't be putting mobile phone cells down them yet, so you'll still need the radio, but if you like travelling on dirt roads like the Great Central Road, are going to be bitumised and they've started them already. It'll be good for ca caravanners that don't want to take their vehicle off the road, but for the dirt, dirt munchers, well, get out and do it now. So, Aussie HF, that's our club. Established in November of 2016, we're a club for travellers or people who have an interest in mobile HF. Okay, a bit of a commercial about the mission statement to provide an environment in which members will have access to the most innovative, and that's a key word for us, and reliable HF based services and facilities on the land mobile service for welfare and social communications. So it is for social but it's also very important for welfare and we have a number of facilities available to you as a member for you to tap into to make sure you've got the best welfare coverage you can get. And our vision is to become the most effect cost effective land mobile service and when you consider what the costs are that I've just explained to you, that's before we even talk about any of the cost of the transceivers and that we've got in our bases, um, while being prepared to explore all opportunities, commercial and non-commercial, to provide enhanced services. Now that means it's about the member. It's not about a business. We're not, a, we're not an organisation that's there to make money out of it. We're there simply as a club. And our motto, you can push it again. Ah, didn't do it. Safety through unity. You did, thank you. <laughs> so safety through unity. That's what our key motto is, that because we're a club, because we all have a common interest and we use common facilities, we have a safety net over us. And for travellers, it's a really important thing. I don't know if you've been noticing lately in the media the number of people that have been passing away in the outback particularly in, in northern Western, or northwest of Western Australia, a lot of people being getting caught out, their cars are breaking down, they're bogged and that. 
they're stuck. They have no comms, they're stuck, and they die. And it's been happening at a record rate last year. It was scary. This is why we're trying to get to people and say, OK, if nothing else, know the dangers of where you're going. Our member profile is... Oh, we're a club, not a business, nor a subscriber. So therefore, you don't pay money into a, an organisation where you have no say. As a club member with us, if you want to say, Ray Farmer, you're doing a lousy job, I want to get rid of you, you vote me out. You have the say in the club. Think of how many times you, you don't get that opportunity, you get told this was what will happen and it happens. The councils do all that to you. you know? um, we're travellers, obviously, we're in Australia. Some of our members, uh, we're fairly old. I think I might have mentioned we're quite an old... Our club actually has a fairly old age profile. I think the average age probably in the early 70s. Because we're... Uh, you can think about the people who have now got mobile homes, fifth wheelers, etc., big money. They're the baby boomers that have retired. Unfortunately, I'm a baby boomer. I don't have that sort of money, but... That, a lot of our people are actually on the road 24-7. They sell their house, buy a mobile home, buy a, buy a fifth wheeler, buy a caravan, and they go travelling. In their later parts of their lives, they want to see this country for what it is. So, they are travellers within Australia. They travel in the outback areas, remote areas, where there's no phone coverage, and that's really crucial because that's where some of the prettiest parts of this country are. How many have actually been, say, through um, out near... Uluru or um, say Docker River, any, any been out there yet? Go there, you get a chance, it's, it isn't brilliant isn't it? It's just amazing. And, and, and people drive through the Simpson Desert and go, oh there's nothing here. Why? Because they never stop to have a look. Stop and have a look and this is what we enable people to do, given that coverage. They're general radio enthusiasts, not all of them, some of them just purely want it for safety. There are people like myself that, being an amateur, we like playing around with radios, like this crackle pop of HF noise. Eh, strange man. And uh, we like the social contact. We have, as I said earlier, these things called mates musters, where um, we try to, because we're Australia-wide, because we're members everywhere in the country, we try to get people uh, together. So we hold functions around the country. We, People call them get-togethers. We call them mates musters because it's all our mates get together and we talk, have a few beers, tell lies, have a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, it's a really, really enjoyable social environment. So there's not only the welfare side of it, there's the social side as well. And the welfare watch. I'll just give you a brief run-through on that in a minute. Thank you. So how does someone join? It's very simple. And there it is. It's an odd-looking... Um, Website, I must admit, it's an odd-looking URL for a start off, but yes, it's www.aussiehf.club. And when you log on to that, you'll see one of the most spectacular websites you'll see. It's, but please, I, I have to put this cave in now already. The particular photograph at the front that comes up, ah, I forgot I put it on there, does not represent us people. It's, it represents our IT specialist. He's a young bloke, that's his car, and he put his foot down and said he wants that picture in there. But then it does scroll through after that and it shows you some fantastic shots of Australia. But that's his car. And I said, look, can you imagine a 70-year-old person in a motorhome building up over the sand dunes? In fact, we did have one member apply and he said, I wasn't thinking, I'm thinking, what am I getting myself into here if they're doing that? I had to reassure him that stay watching, stay watching and you'll see. The other thing I'm going to ask you to do too, if you do look at it and you do it on a PC, have your speakers on. We have a song on that. It's an Australian song by an Australian songwriter, a guy called Keith Jamieson. I don't know if anybody knows country music, but it is about, it's called Pictures of Australia. Now, if it doesn't want to make you get up and drive and go out there, I'll be very surprised. But listen to it. It's one worth listening to. So that's our website. Okay, so how does it, what does it cost? Well, let's go through that, the boring bits at the moment. So it starts off, one-off joining fee, $20. That, that just covers the administration that we've got to get ourselves up and running. There's an annual fee. 
$80. And you'll see for $80 what you get. And you will be astounded what you get. Nothing to pay. That's it. Once you've paid that money, all the other facilities and services that the club has at your disposal is at no charge. At no charge. Including a welfare watch, which we'll talk about later. A membership year is from the 1st of February to the 31st of January. It's also our financial year. And pro rata membership is available during the year. Obviously, if you join in August, you don't pay the full price. As I said, we're very Aussie focused. And we're very proud of this country. You'll find when your members sit down and talk, the pride that comes out of them about where they're being. We have one particular woman who's on the radio pretty well every night. She's an encyclopedia for this country. She will tell you every little spot. She's, she's been there, she's 72, we found out last night. And she could tell you where to camp, where not to camp, where to get free water, where to get power, everywhere in Australia. So we're very Aussie focused and we have names such as Mates Muster, I already mentioned to you, Home Paddock which is where our members section of our website was, Glass Session. Ah, that's a good question, what is that? Okay, let's try and work this out, shall we? A Glass Session, what do you think it is? Yeah, exactly. Amateurs call it rag chewing. It's a, it's, and some other groups call it a um, sked time. We call it galah session because that's exactly what we do. Yak, 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 yak. Just like a set of galahs. And it's, it's, it, it is regulated times when we start them off, but we don't regulate anything. So we say to our members that you've got this time on this channel, fill your boots. And we do it every night. Groups of people get on and they talk about everything from their latest operation through to um, you know, what happened to their car or where they've been. Um, Swaggy's Outpost. It's where, again, where somebody finds a really smick spot and they want other people, members of the club to know, but we won't tell everybody else about it because we don't want everybody else there. So they put it on there, they take a photograph, put their GPS position in, and it comes up on our website in that section called Swaggy's Outpost. So, why join? What are the benefits? Well, thanks, guys. We have 19 different frequencies available to us. Range off from three megs through to 16 megs. And that's a huge range of frequencies available to us. And as you know, for those that are, that are HF enthusiasts, what's been the situation over the last couple of years? HF propagation wise, what is it? It's rats, isn't it? Why? We're at the bottom of the 11 year sunspot cycle. This gives us the scope. And anybody who uses IPS websites at all, which I'm going to talk, we use that a lot. Do you use it as well? And I'll tell you what, people originally said, oh, it's not all that good. It is brilliant. But we'll talk about that in a second, very quickly. So yeah, so obviously with the sunspot cycle activity the way it is, having a range of frequencies is important. And because we start off at three megs, and right at the moment, the, the lower frequencies are really kicking, really going well, but they don't have the range that the higher frequencies got, but we've got ways to come around that. Um, we have access to five remote bases, so our bases are around Australia. Start off at Perth, which we're going to move slightly inland a bit. Derby, Sapphire in Queensland, in the uh, Newcastle region, and one right in the middle at Alice Springs. Beautiful coverage, good HF spread coverage. Um, sorry, just before we advance that any further. So from those bases, you can make phone calls with your radio. Even one of the oldest radios around now, you can make a phone call with it. And you know what? It's free. Our club doesn't charge you for any phone calls through those bases. We, we, all we do is ask, don't spend two hours on it. You block it up for everybody else. SMS messaging through the bases, done as well. GPS positions. For some of those, the more, more modern radios, you can either plug in a GPS module to it, or my radio, for example, has got the GPS module built into the antenna tuning unit. You can put your position in straight away. The beauty of also when you put the GPS position in, you may not want this, this may not be a good thing for you, but you can set it up so that it sends an email to anyone that you like, say like Dawn and I send it to our children to adult children 
And in that email is a link to Google Earth. And you click on the link, brings up a picture of Australia and shows you exactly where you are. So at no stage are you ever not, are you ever really lost. So our, our family knows where we are. I mean, you can change who you want it to send to, or don't want to send it to anybody if you want to stay incognito, it's entirely up to you. Um, we have also an email service where, let's say uh, your business, you're, you're employed, and your business wants to get in touch with you about something, they don't have a radio, they can send an email through the website, which they can access. Next time you log on, and pass our GPS position, it'll then download all those messages to your radio. And it'll, you'll read the message on your screen. You don't have to have a phone or anything like that because you're usually out of phone range. So it'll download onto your screen. You can also send messages between the two vehicles. So if you wanted to send one to me, hey Ray, how's the champagne? Bloop, over it comes. Oh, good, thanks. Bloop, back to you. It comes up on the screen. We have direct contact, contact with the Royal Flying Doctor Service. And this is significant. This is really significant. Because we've had a, numerous cases where our members not been involved in accidents but have come across an accident or an incident. And there's no service for hundreds and hundreds of miles. So you need to get the emergency services. So by very quickly going through, and we've got a very, very simple system. If you've ever been involved in an emergency situation, the, the panic factor tends to stop you thinking clearly. You've, I know, I've done it myself, fogged over. Think, oh, what do I do now? It's important the radio, as I said earlier, be simple and or you be completely cognizant on how to use the radio so that you don't have to think. Well, this system, the RFDS system that we've got is so simple. Some other organisations do have a way, but when you look at the various combinations and permutations, there's 120 different choose choices you've got to make before you get through. We don't. Two. Two. That's it. Two choices. And then what happens is, initially with our uh, contact with the Flying Doctor Service, we were only permitted to use what you would call the triple zero call. No life and death call. Well, we've negotiated with them now so that we can put a range of calls through. So we can go from life-threatening to accident, but not life-threatening, or to just their vehicle breakdown. But what we do is we have a protocol in place that tells the Royal Flying Doctor Service what priority to put on our call. So if I was calling about life and death, we would prefix the call by emergency, emergency, emergency. Bang, straight away they know it's a life and death situation. And then we go down through, um, and I have to admit, I'm embarrassed because I, I wrote the book and I can't remember the second two call signs. I got caught out this morning. But I think it's, it, one of them is, oh, that's right, it's, it's um, distress and then urgency. So the, but you have to mention those three words, and I'll go back now and, and get stuck into myself for not doing this because I get stuck into our members for not doing it. Um, and remember what those three words are, and it tells the RFDS what level. So if it's a low level, just a vehicle breakdown, and they're already handling an emergency, they'll tell us to stand by or they'll call you back. Now, there is the real advantage, because the Royal Flying Doctor Service have the ability to call you back through our bases. So you don't have to be there with your radio. They will come up. Not only will they be able to call you back, but we have, they have access to our membership database. They can see... For example, if it is you that's involved and you've filled out certain medical conditions on your membership form, if that's what you want, they will know that straight away. It's, a, it's, it's about welfare. It's about looking after the members. They'll also know where you are as long as you put your GPS position in. There, and as I said, there are no charges for these services. All these services are included in the membership price. This is why I'm out there telling people about it because it's a service which you really can't afford to be without. If you're going bush, you need to have this service available to you. Um, so there's no charge for any of these services. Um, some other organisations which are a, a lot more expensive than us, uh, you have to buy apps and all this sort of stuff and that's only good if you're in mobile phone or use your radio. Just a bit more, a bit more of the advertising. We have tech, technical specialists. Now I know we're all like, we all think we're pretty cool when it comes to technical stuff. We all well, muck around a bit. We've been doing it for years. But trust me, there's times when you think, well, why did that happen? Well, how do I do this? 
and we're dealing with proprietary radio like a Kodan or a Barrett, you need to have somebody on board on your side that can give you the answer straight away. We have them. We have techni technical specialists we call our field officers in the club and we have our IT specialists in the club too. So any problems, these guys are available. You just phone them up, say, what do I do here? How do I do this? Or you phone me and I say, oh, I'll phone them and get back to you. Again, that's a no charge. We have an active social calendar. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We do that. And IPS registration. I was talking to you about this before. IPS? IPS who? Anybody? Correct. Yeah, you've done this. Onospheric Prediction Service. It's a government body, now comes under the BOM, and I think that's what one of the discussions is going to be today, and if you get a chance to see it, it's worth watching. The um, Ionosphere Prediction Service, uh, that's what they used to be called, they now come under the Bureau of Meteorology, Space Weather. They do a number of charts and that based on our bases, so you can look at that if you're going to go travelling, you can tell what the best frequencies are, what time of the day, etc, etc. And we are registered, if you have a look at their list of members, they've got Qantas, they've got Virgin, they've got um, uh, Radio New Zealand and then there yeah, they've got the Australian HF Touring Club because we're registered with them and they know our frequencies, they know our services and they keep up, uh, us updated. And we're very friendly people. That's the key. The one thing about us is that we're a club and it's designed to be friendly with everybody. And have a look around before you decide where you're going to go if you decide to do this and you'll find that we're definitely the lowest fees. I think the biggest and the, most, the oldest around is currently charge 140, plus charges for phone calls, plus this, plus that, plus that. Okay, so, our bases. We try to get remote bases, and why do you think that would be? Anybody, what do you think? No, why do we have these bases there? What do you think is key about them? That's it. You, the coverage is, is important. It's, it's, it has to be blanket. It has to be, if you look at the radiation pattern, and most of them are vertical antennas, so it's a pretty good coverage. But there is one other big feature too. Why are they usually not, apart from Perth, which we are going to move later on, why are they where they are? Because there's... Ah, madam, you've hit it on the nail. It's the Lowe's noise floor. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly right. We put them remotely because there's they're low, low noise floor. Now you'd say Alice Springs, well, I've just finished uh, working in air services as the HF operating authority and we put new antennas around the country. And Alice Springs, you can be in one spot and be noisy as, as you could possibly be and you move it down five, ten kilometres away and it's quiet as. We did that just recently and, um, well, it's been there for a while now, but it's, it's a very, very no, no, low noise floor. Um, Sapphire is a very low noise floor. Hunters are very, they're all no, low noise. So when you're making phone calls, that's important. You want the person receiving your phone call to be able to hear you. Okay. Um, oh, there it is. See, I knew I remember. <laughs> that's the terminology you use when you... <laughs> How embarrassing. That's the terminology you use uh, when you're calling the RFDS. So emergency three times, alert three times, and attention three times. Yeah, that's close. Um, and that, they're the different scenarios. So it gives us the scope to let the RFDS call us back. Ah, digital voice. Now I know that the ad's been flogging digital voice, but I've got a very, very nice demonstration. Has anybody played with digital voice on HF? Have you? Yeah, what do you think? Well, when you see this demonstration, and I now have a Barrett 950, uh, 4050, and I've been playing with it, and it's, it's mind-blowing. There's only one problem. I like HF noise. Yeah, where's the noise? Like, poor wife, just to sit in the car, and I've either got the mute turned up so that I can't hear anything, or it's blaring away with this white noise. And you can put DSP on it and some of the old radios, they're pretty ordinary DSP. The current generation software defined radio is amazing. And when you look at digital, and I'm about to show you a quick demonstration of that, it blows your mind. It really does. And I've been demonstrating it with, um, in, I'm from Brisbane and I've been talking probably 50 kilometres. I'll tell you about that after I've flown it now. Um, 
So, okay. Okay, we'll just see how it goes. Can we get the audio up on that one? Thanks. This is what happened. So it's a real test. It was done once. Okay, Rob, I'm going to uh, try and make a call back to the Barrett base. Analog. I'll talk about that in the ALE automatically. So we're doing an ALE call. We've got the ALE 2G capability with the radio as well. So you can just hear there. That's the uh, call coming back from the base station. The radio is looking for the best base station to use. ALE, automatic link establishment. Our radios do that. So I can just hear that base coming in. Barrett base, Barrett base. This is Barrett Mobile. Radio check over. See, I can't hear him, Rob. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to activate my digital voice. And try again. Barrett Base, this is Barrett Mobile. Radio check now, over. Barrett Mobile, this is Barrett Base. You are loud and clear, loud and clear, over. Barrett Base, this is Barrett Mobile. I'm receiving you, loud and clear, loud and clear. Your analog signal to me was very weak, barely readable. Obviously now using the digital voice function of the SDR, I've now made a unworkable channel, very workable, over. Hi Roger, yes, you are coming through loud and clear. What is your location, over? Okay, currently I'm located about 90 kilometres southeast of the factory, of your location. I'm in uh, Australian bush, and we're driving down a track, currently mobile at about uh, 20 kilometres an hour. Over. Uh, Roger, understood, over. Okay, thanks very much for that Barrett base. This is uh, Barrett Mobile, and I'll contact you when we are returning back to your location. This is Barrett Mobile out. So that there, demonstration of the um, significant advantage of having a digital voice capability in your radio, Rob. That's pretty impressive, Liv. Okay, so yeah, this is commercial, there's no doubt about it. But it, it, it is perfect description of how well digital works. And I was going to say to you, that I use that radio now, I've got one downstairs which I can demonstrate uh, how well it works between two, two of our bases if you want to have a listen to it. But I was, um, anybody know Brisbane at all? Do you know where Mogul is? No? Okay, it's a little like uh, Parramatta versus, oh, what's a, what's a southeastern suburb of Sydney? Southern, yeah, okay. So that's, how far would they be apart, do you think? Roughly? Okay, well, 30 k's is what I was talking, so... And again, I was just audible on analogue. What was that on AD? Just the radio? Um... I didn't... Uh, seven, I didn't see. That's their frequency, so I don't know. We're... I, oh, was it? Yeah, well, obviously their 80... Yeah, their 80 metre channel. I didn't take a lot of notice, but... That's what he did, and the other thing that was interesting there was, did you notice when he first pushed the button, it made all this digital sound? That, and he described it, it's called ALE, Automatic Link Establishment, where the system can hunt for the best bass to use and the best frequency to use. He doesn't do anything, just pushes the button. And it does it automatic. Our bases are set up with this now as well. Yeah, so we're gonna, and the only thing is, your radio's gotta be set up for it too. But that demonstration, I was doing exactly the same thing between my place in Narangbar and Mogul, which is about 50 kilometres on 
whatever frequency I was using, six megs I think, I could just hear the other end, went on to digital and it was like that. It is quite spectacular, but that's what the new generation software defined radios do. Can you just advance that? Okay, ALE, it's a feature, that, that's the ad for it, it just says that it does everything, it looks for everything for you. All right. Um, okay, so the other thing that we do, of course, is training for our, star, for our members because, and this is the thing that we try to impress very heavily on our, our members, is that the partner, and it may be the male, it may be the woman, it may be just the male, the partner has to know how to use the radio as well. I was with Dawn on the Plenty Highway a couple of years ago and I jagged my glasses into my eye getting in in the morning to getting in the car and I just turned that eye white, woof. Dawn knew exactly what to do. And we encouraged that. So we do member training and this was our, one of our latest musters where the women got in and showed us th their stuff. And they're good, they're good operators, they're very comfortable, very confident with it. Um, okay, so the welfare side of things. We have a sardine serve, anybody here a pilot? How are we going? Okay. Uh, um, you're a pilot? You know what a SAR time is? Exactly. So what happens is you can simply put a, you go onto the website, nominate some details about where you want to go and be, and what you want us to do. We'll set up people, we call them assets, to chase you, to keep an eye on you. So it's a welfare service. I'll talk about that. If you want to know more about that, come and see me down at the, at the tent and we'll talk about it down there. Next one. Oh, yeah. On spheric prediction service I talked about earlier, we've simply got um, access to it. Again, mates, musters I've talked about. That's just examples of our people getting together and talking. We do a lot of community work with the scouts groups and that, like Joda, etc. We, we do that as well. We also, the next slide will probably show you. Um, this group of family, you may have read about them uh, one year on a bike. They rode around Australia for a year, a family of four, the, Wa the Walters family. We worked with them, got them uh, donated tents and sleeping bags and all that sort of stuff to help them on their way. Fantastic family. So there, thank you very much for listening. Do we have any final questions before I wind up? Yeah. Yes. Push a button. Oh, the, well, you've obviously, you've obviously Hello. got. Yeah, I take. Okay, good question. The question to ask was, I guess, is if you're going to use digital to call somebody, how does the other person know to be on digital as well? Yeah, and that's it. it there is no automatic. No, it doesn't. But what it does do at the moment, and that will come. That will come, and we're going to set that up through our bases as well. Uh, the real trick, though, is actually the board rate that the system uses. And the Barrett radio, actually, and what we found was I had a high noise floor, so my signal, uh, my uh, digital signal had a 700 board rate, whereas he had a low noise floor, his signal was 1200 board rate. It was brilliant. So the, they, the current Barrett adjusts, but the Kodan sits on 2400 and stays at that. So there's still a fair bit of work going. As far as if you want to talk to me in digital, I have to say change over to digital. And that's what happens at the moment. Because there is a problem with licensing as well, which you're, under, you're not supposed to have digital and analog signals on the same frequency if there's no um, listen before speak facility. Okay, thank you very much for your attendance. It's a pleasure to see you all. We've got a gazebo down the bottom. If you want to come and talk to us further and see some demonstrations, we'd love to uh, catch up with you. Thank you very much. Great, thank, great. thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to present you with a, a certificate of appreciation from the club. Now, this is the very first one, I think, that we have presented in a well, long series of lectures over the years. So there awesome. you are. Well, thank you very much to the club for letting us come along. and. Uh, applying our wares and telling you a bit of thought. I appreciate your attendance. Thank you. Right.